the reselling addiction. Why is reselling addictive? Why can it be addictive? Why is sourcing addictive? Now, I did a video not so long ago about reselling and hoarding some of my experiences. And I had a lot of comments on that video saying it was quite relatable. So the addictive side of reselling. So I'm going to do my own interpretation of why I think reselling can be addictive. So the reselling side of it, the sourcing side of it can be very, very addictive. It can be enjoyable. It's the thrill. It's the excitement. You never know what you're going to find. It can be a bit of a fear of missing out as well. There's a lot of people who have this compulsion to have to be at charity shops at eight o'clock in the morning when they first open, car boots right at the crack of dawn when they first open, because it's a fear of missing out. Somebody might take the stock and people might take stock if they're there earlier. However, it is that fear of missing out sometimes that compels us to go. Somebody else is getting all these bargains. They're putting it on YouTube. Let me go and find out. And it's that sort of thought process. It's the fear you put it puts the fear that I'm not going to get any stock now or it's the excitement of seeing people doing this and you want to replicate it and do it yourself and get that buzz from it you never know what bargains you're going to find as well so that can be addictive and that's addictive in itself it's the not knowing what you're going to find it's the excitement it's the dopamine response which i'm going to talk about a little bit in a minute but the dopamine response it's the feel good feeling that you get because you don't know what you're going to find it's that reward response as well so when you do find something so you've got the excitement going through you don't know what you're going to find you find some bargains and you get that dopamine releasing as a reward response and it's a very nice feeling. It's a lovely feeling. It's like the thrill of the chase sometimes. You don't know what you're going to find. Are there any other resellers in the shop? Are there any other resellers at the car boot sale? Nine times out of ten, yes, there will be. The charity shops are full of resellers. Not full of them. Sometimes you'll go into a charity shop that's empty. But the car boot sale is exactly the same. It's the thrill of the chase. Sometimes, if you're a little bit competitive, you might feel, can I get to the bargains before anybody else? And it's that competitive feeling. It's the thrill of the chase. Can I get there before anyone else? What am I going to find? And it's the excitement that you get as a result of that. It's that unknown. And especially if you like being spontaneous, I'm a very spontaneous person. I understand this completely because it's being spontaneous and not knowing what you're going to come across. That's exciting in itself. It's the buzz. It's the excitement. The sales, you also get a dopamine response when you make sales. And that's the motivation to keep going. That keeps you going in that cycle. And I'm not saying this is a bad thing. I'm not doing a video to say reselling is bad. I'm doing it just to highlight certain patterns that you might be experiencing yourself. Because I experience them. I think it's normal because we've all got these hormones that I'm going to be talking about in a minute. We all do love the sourcing element of it some people like the listing some people do love the listing however i find listing boring i like the sourcing i like finding the stock i also like the sales but the rest of it can be a bit boring it can be just the run of the mill sort of it feels like monday morning and i don't want to do anything sort of feeling and it's getting the balance right so you're not too obsessive with the sourcing like i can be when i go out and buy stock and then i need to get it all listed and it's overwhelming because i haven't listed it so we will release dopamine and like a reward response when we make a sale that sound on the app if you've got your sound on and you've got notifications on when you hear that sound we all know what it is that sound on ebay that can be that reward response you get that buzz you get that excitement you check your phone what have you sold even if it's a small sale it's still that reward and in your brain your hormones are releasing dopamine they're releasing the feel-good hormones to keep you going it's that excitement you feel like you've done this you've made a sale and it's that reward. You feel good. It's that satisfaction. When we do check our phone to find out what we've sold, it's that excitement of not knowing. It's the unknown. What have we listed? What is it that's sold? And you kind of have this thought in your head, I wonder what it is. When you look at your phone, it's great. Now, the other thing I will say as well is it's like conditioning a little bit. So you probably have heard of Pavlov and his dog. The little bell and the salivating. So what he did was every time he rang this bell, he conditioned his dog 
to salivate. So I think he used food. So every time he heard this bell, so if food wasn't involved, this dog would start to salivate and it's conditioning. We're all conditioned, every single one of us, in different ways. I'm not going to get too deep into that, but we're all conditioned. Now, eBay, if you have your notifications, if you hear that, we're conditioned to think that's a sale. So if you heard that sound without it being connected to eBay, you'd automatically think that's a sale because it's conditioning. It's just basic psychology. So that is, it gives you a buzz. So if you heard it in connection to something else, you'd get a buzz and then you'd feel a bit of a come down thinking, oh, it's not, it's not a sale, you know. But it is if I hear somebody else's phone go off and it's a, you know, the eBay sound. I always think, oh my God, it's a sale. What is that? And I want to check my phone. If it's somebody else's, I think, fair play to them, they've got a sale. That, that's really good. So it's that sort of response. The cycle does continue with this as well. So the cycle continues and it can get larger and larger. And this is how addictions can happen. I'm not saying reselling is addictive. I'm not saying it's an addiction. And I'm not taking the mickey out of people with addictions because they are awful addictions are they can destroy your life now there are different types of addictions you've got drinking you substance misuse you've got things like gambling it could be smoking it could even be things like binge eating and i know that sounds probably a little bit strange but there's many different addictions that somebody might have now i used to smoke i used to be a smoker i know it's disgusting but i was aware of the dangers of it i was aware of how bad it was but i felt like i needed to smoke it was quite a few years ago and i managed to give up but it was hard to break that cycle it was addictive yes smoking is addictive with what's in the cigarettes but also it's addictive because you're used to doing it. It's that sort of conditioning. You've conditioned yourself to do it as well. So it's that buzz. You smoke. I'm not going to go too much into it because it's like, I want to go for a cigarette now. But I'm only joking, I don't. But you you will smoke a cigarette and you think this is bloody lovely. And it is, it's lovely and it relaxes you and it's that feel good feeling. It, it stinks. It makes you smell. It's horrible. But it's that feeling, it's that feeling of, I feel relaxed, I feel great, I feel the stress has gone. And it's that dopamine response. And then because you get that, you want to do it again. And that's the cycle you get. You're basically releasing hormones, your brain chemistry, your neurons, your hormones. You're releasing certain hormones to keep that addiction going. It's the cycle, it keeps going and going and going. And it's hard to break. And the further you are into that, it is hard to break. And like I say, I used to smoke. It's very, very hard to stop. I managed to stop, but it is really hard to stop because the times I were like, right, I'll go for a cigarette now. I'll just go and smoke. I'll go and stand out in a bit. My, my excuse, I'm going to have a bit of fresh air. I'm going to stand outside. But I'm going to stand outside, have a cigarette. That's a bit of me time. And that is peace and quiet. Just chill out. But... When I stopped smoking, I found it really hard to <laughs> replace that with something else. And I thought, I'd go for a cigarette now. What should I do? Make a cup of tea. I'll just, you know, have a snack. And these are the things where you're trying to fill it with something else because you want that response of, I want the dopamine. I want the really good hormones to go. You want to feel that buzz. And it's not the same, but it is healthier when you break these addictions. So that was me with smoking and reselling with the sourcing because it's such fun you, you want to keep going you want to keep doing it because it's exciting you get that buzz you get that thrill the same is from and it's not the same as having like a, a serious sort of addiction but scrolling through your phone our mobile phones are a big big factor in distraction in this day and age when i was growing up a mobile phone was a mobile phone it was a phone you didn't have the internet on it you if you wanted to phone somebody that's all you could probably do if you were lucky you could send a text message but there were only certain amount of characters you could put on this text message but we've all got a computer in our hands these days and it's the same thing we want to keep scrolling and scrolling and scrolling because the more you scroll through your phone the more you see it's that oh curiosity what's this what's this 
what's going on on here and it's that sort of addiction you get because you want to keep looking and it's a compulsion behind it and by the time you realize three hours have passed and you've not really done much so what are these good hormones that you release so dopamine is a big one dopamine is one that you've probably heard of it's one of the buzzwords that everybody uses in this modern day so it's probably one you've already heard of dopamine is like the feel-good hormone it's like the hormone that you release and when you release like a dopamine response and it's a good dopamine response it's like a reward response it's one of the happy hormones so with dopamine you can also release oxytocin oxytocin is a happy hormone it's like the love hormone if you're in love with somebody or you're attracted to somebody you might get that sort of fuzzy feeling that's the oxytocin releasing if you're really passionate about a subject if you're passionate about like a hobby or an interest it can make you feel good you can release oxytocin in that way there are other ways you can release oxytocin as well you've also got serotonin so serotonin is another good hormone that we release people might talk about having lower serotonin levels so if you're experiencing anxiety depression your serotonin levels may be on the lower side so this is why doctors can sometimes prescribe antidepressants sometimes to boost serotonin levels just to try and help improve that sort of imbalance in your brain now serotonin is another important hormone that does really sort of the happy feeling and they all work alongside each other they do work sort of together and you've also got your natural endorphins now natural endorphins you might go for a little run around the block or go for a little walk you might do some, now I was, not so much now, I need to get back into this, but when I was into weightlifting, I used to feel absolutely amazing after a weightlifting session. And I used to come away from the gym thinking I'm exhausted, but I feel full of life because you naturally release endorphins and it makes you feel happy. It makes you feel good and it makes you want to continue with that. And these are the hormones that if you experience them, you get that sort of reward feeling in your brain and you want to keep going and this is how addictions can happen but it's those pleasure feelings the feelings we all like for example like eating a chocolate cake if you don't like chocolate it's not going to apply i love chocolate and this is another one of my downfalls where i could easily eat chocolate till it's going out of fashion i do i love it absolutely love chocolate and for me because it tastes so good it can get to the point of eating that much to the point of making myself feel unwell i know this is probably a really poor example but it's the same it makes you feel good you want more of it you're going to have more of it if you're having a bit of a bad day you're going to do you want to do something that's going to cheer you up comedy laughter this can increase your happy hormones and it can make you feel better it can release endorphins those sort of things doing good those sort of things can release these really good hormones however the slippy slope is if you are doing something obsessively and not keeping a track of what you're doing it's so easy to slip from it being really good and this is a really good thing i'm doing to it being an obsession a compulsion and an addiction and it is a very gray area and it's not always obvious that that's happening but it can be and with reselling i struggle with going out and i know it's not the same as like i say big sort of addictions but it's the compulsion of wanting to buy more stock not because i'm scared of not getting stock not the fear of missing out but it's because i just want to go out sourcing because i enjoy it i don't know what i'm going to find i might come away empty-handed sometimes when you come away empty-handed from a car boot sale or a charity shop wherever you go sourcing if you ever come back empty-handed you can feel really disappointed and sometimes because you want that high you want that dopamine release you want the happy hormones you want that really positive feeling when you come away empty-handed it can hit you harder because you want that sort of buzz you want that sort of good feeling and these hormones i will just say are normal it's normal to feel like that but what happens is the extremes of these feelings is when it does get into the sort of addictive sort of territory especially if you've got addictive personality because i'm very much like that where i can get a little bit obsessed with something so i want to be outsourcing all the time i get obsessed with it i want to go out i want to source 
and I want to spend all of the time possible sourcing. However, it's not healthy and I always have to take a step back sometimes and appreciate that. Try and restrict it. Restrict it as much as possible and then I'll enjoy it more. It's like children. So this is probably not going to be the best analogy. So as a child, we have our parents, our peers, anybody older than us to sort of guide us, teach us and guide us in the right direction. As a child, I could have easily ate bags of sweets, 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 chocolates, all the unhealthy stuff, all the things kids love to do. I could have played on my Sega Mega Drive playing Sonic the Hedgehog for hours on end and not actually having a break. However, my parents used to restrict that not in a harsh way, but it's like you can only go on the Sega Mega Drive for so long. I absolutely hated it. I loved the time I was on it, but I want to play longer. And I used to sneak down sometimes <laughs> and play if my parents were in bed and just try and get away with it that way. And never used to, I used to always get caught. I'm not very subtle, you see. I'm not very discreet. But those are the things where you've got your parents and you've got people who are older than you and they usually guide you. If I was allowed to eat sweets, junk food, rubbish all the time, if I was allowed to play the Sega Mega Drive all the time, it would have ended in disaster. But kids are taught from that age to... Kids don't like it. Kids are not very good at expressing emotions because they're still learning. So they're very expressive usually. Now... It is very difficult, but as an adult, I don't have anybody telling me what I can and can't do, what I should and shouldn't do, which is why with addictions, it can be really difficult. You can overcome them though, but with the reselling, I don't have somebody to say, hang on, do you think you need to take a bit of a step back? Maybe if somebody was here, they could probably say, look, Rebecca, you are buying a lot. Do you think, you know, you need all this sort of stuff? And I'll probably think, well, I'm going to go out and do it anyway. Because <laughs> that's the sort of person I am. But no, joking aside, it's one of those where sometimes it takes that one person just to say, do you think you need to go out sourcing today? Or do you think you've got enough? And that plants the seed and I'll be like, actually, probably not. But I'm going to go sourcing today and then I won't for a while. That's probably what I'd do because you still need to go source and you still need to have that enjoyment in life. But it's when it becomes the addiction and it's that compulsion. And then we get into that sort of addictive sort of the addictions. But reselling on a whole, I think the addictive part can be the sourcing. I love the sourcing. If I could make money and run my business on just sourcing alone, I would be in my element. I love making the sales. The listing is difficult. Once I get into it, I'm absolutely fine. I don't mind doing it, but I find it time consuming. I find it boring. I don't want to be stuck to my phone. I don't want to be glued to my phone because that's another thing. But I find that side of it boring. I don't mind packaging the items and sending them. I find that quite rewarding. I find it satisfying as soon as I've posted them. I think they've gone. It's lovely. And I like to have the chat to people in the post office as well. So that's really nice as well. Nice to have a little bit of a, how are you doing sort of thing. But on the whole, I do find that the sourcing is very addictive at times. And sometimes I need to take a step back. I do appreciate there's probably going to be somebody watching saying, well, I'm a full-time reseller and I need to re I need to go sourcing often. And I, I agree, if you are full-time reselling, if it's part of your business model, do it. But what I'm talking about is when you have the compulsion, you have the urge to keep going sourcing when you don't need to go sourcing because you've got the stock. But it's enjoyable. You love it. And that's the that's the bit I'm really referring to here. There is nothing wrong with sourcing. If you need to go sourcing, you need to get the stock in. But when you're doing it just because you might miss out or just because you want a bit of a buzz from it or somebody might get there first and you might miss out on stuff, there might be not anything for you at a later date, then that's the wrong approach to take because that's the approach I've taken. It's hard to get that balance right. Let me know in the comments what you think about this. It is a subject that I don't really talk about much and I don't really hear a lot of people talking about, but it's a subject that I wanted to just talk about in a bit more detail. My opinions, my experiences, doesn't mean it's going to be valid for somebody else. These are just things I've experienced, things that I've witnessed with 
things in my own life as well. So let me know in the comments what you think. I hope you liked today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up and I will see you in my next video.